Oh, playing a strong player. Okay, this will be perhaps a more serious game. Um, and we'll have a Pirates, or maybe a Modern. When are we getting all Geo Stream? Oh. Um. Someday. You just have to keep reminding me. It's easy to forget. I already said that I might stream Scrabble later. Oh, let's transpose to a Ponziani. Ponziani, uh... It's like a d6 Ponziani, actually. Yeah, I usually like to play h3 here, which kind of loses a pawn. But that's okay. Black's not taking it, though, which is kind of sad. So the idea, if Black were to take it in this position or in this position, there is d5 and queen a4, and I would win a knight. It's a nice, uh, nice Ponziani tactic. That's why when you're Black, you, you sometimes have to be careful of this potential queen check. Do I like listening to music while I'm training? Training. I'm trying to think what it means to train these days. Because I honestly don't actively... I guess I don't have a normal like training regimen for chess. A lot of the chess I play and sometimes study is on stream. Um... I'll listen to music when I take walks, like music or podcasts, but I guess if I'm studying chess, I just, it's, it's better if I don't have any distractions. I'll probably be studying more over the coming weeks for this, um, as I am not a GM, I try and do some, some daily tactics, some opening prep. Might look into like a few books too. Might order like some of the, the Agard books. Okay, so this is a pleasant position. Uh, it's a nice center. Black's a bit low on space. I think I'll play a4. It's not clear what black is doing here. I'm just preventing b5 entirely. And sometimes these positions require more slow play, where you just, you sit, you slowly improve, the opponent has less space. I'm still trying to figure out my, my optimal piece placement. Okay, I think this is okay. Might be before I have bishop b1. And this is one way to play. I kind of regret playing a4 because now I can never play a3. But the bishop stays alive. Yeah, normally I'd like to go for this maneuver. But then, then I lose a pawn. Uh, question is how to... Yeah, how to proceed. Because the bishop's stuck, which means the rook is stuck. I do have e5. e5 takes, takes. Knight moves. Rook a3 first, just idea rook c3. Looks reasonable, actually. I'm not too concerned about d5, because now I have e5. Thank you, Elijah Tachenko. Elijah Tachenko, solving for five months in advance. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely be streaming five months from now. Unless I retire, but that's unlikely. I really appreciate that. Five months from now will be... will be June. I learned my lesson from a few days ago. 
I would have said May, but yeah, June is five, five months from now. Okay, so black wants to play this move. Um, I think I'll start with rook c3. There's also bishop f4, just defending the pawn. I think bishop f4 is a bit more flexible, because I might want to play rook e3. Also, drama with $3. Oh, your blitz is rated 1250, your 1700 in puzzles. Uh, that's pretty normal. Yeah, it's very normal for your puzzle rating to be higher than your whatever your online inputs or rapid ratings are. And I think most people can relate. Hari Krishnan, welcome back. Happy New Year. Thanks for the New Year bits. Hello, Eric. Have you tried peppermint tea? Ooh. Um, not recently, but at some point in life. I'm a little bit un indecisive here. I think I'll play this move. Or I'm just trying to figure out what my like long-term plan is. The benefit with rook e3 is I over-defend the pawn, and then I can mobilize my knight. But then my bishop kind of gets stuck. Yeah, I think I'll play this. And target the C file. I think you J3 BNT. Solving for three months. So I did have unexpected pemperment recently. I told this story, I think the my last stream a few days ago. When was it? It was a morning of New Year's Eve. So it was like 6 a.m. December 31st. I decided to get Starbucks. And I ordered, wait, I have to focus here. I'll tell the story after I make a, a move. Queen B3, slowly but surely. I ordered a London Fog and the barista, the barista went rogue. And rather than making traditional London Fog, the barista made a peppermint London Fog. It was really, really good. London Fog is usually Earl Grey tea with steamed milk. Um, it was like a tea latte. But then there was some like peppermint goodness added to it. It was really good. So that's my peppermint story. Okay, what to do? Maybe this knight can maneuver, and then I can play f3. It's a bit strange, but I have time. The position is still young. Oh, that's a good move. Wow. I was kind of blind to that threat. Thank you, Zippy. Zippy, gifting subs. Okay, I have this move. But then knight h5. How to do this? Queen. I'm kind of just losing a pawn. I could go completely insane. Some knight g4 idea. Much uh, love, Eric and chat. Hope your day has been good. Oh, thanks for the much love. I think I'm going to go insane. But willingly. Involve sacking an exchange. I'll try and explain my reasoning. So I'm threatening this. I mean, the big problem with this move is knight h5, but my point is to play knight g4. Ah, my bishop. Ah. 
Also, my rook is hanging too. <laughs> The hope is to get like some counterplay against h6. I mean, mainly against the king as well. Yeah, this is taking a, a turn for, I mean, sharp, chaotic territory. Thanks for, yeah, thanks people for cheering and subbing and I'll thank more people probably after this game. I gotta stay focused. Opponent's higher rated than me. Okay, so clearly, like, if knight takes bishop, hey, Eric. I, I fork. Pretty sure my opponent sees that. So I think the critical line is knight takes g3, queen takes g3. I'm still threatening a fork, but also threatening to win the pawn. And then there's some idea to take on h6 with the bishop. After a move like king here or here. Because um, knight f6 would be then possible. So I didn't really calculate so much beyond this. I'm just hoping that there's compensation. Next time you get e4, e5, and f3 as black, could you play an elephant d5, mm. x5, e4 instead of Stafford? I don't know about that. It's like... Yeah, that's like... Uh... <laughs> Cheating on a lover. I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of loyal to the Stafford, but maybe. Um, I guess it depends on the situation. Haven't played an elephant in a while, actually. Also haven't looked into the elephant so closely, so I'll have to... I'll probably need to look into it first to get inspiration. Wait, what? Threatening the queen, the rook, and... Okay, so I'm winning the queen. Mob material, too. That worked out really nicely. The question is how to... How to progress. Probably e5. e5 is nice because it, it opens a bishop but also closes down Black's bishop. And really, my main plan is to get the queen probably to e4, only square that's not uh, covered by Black, and then threaten mate. So now I can play queen g4. I think queen f3. Yeah, queen f3 looks nicer because I hit the pawn and threaten this or this. Looks really nice. Gonna have to analyze this game afterwards because I, I really thought I was in trouble, but maybe, maybe the idea just worked out. Okay, so now... If I take the pawn, I mean, queen f5. Choices, choices. I can also take this way. I mean, there's a line where I force the king to f8. And then lift the rook. I think I'll start with this move. And then decide between this or this. But probably just taking. Yeah, now there's there's looming ideas of queen h7. Also pawn e6. Also knight coming in. Could always play f4 for good measure. Also lifting the rook. There's so many ideas here. Hey, it's emote only mode. Nice to get a break from, from the words. Get some, some dose of symbols. Okay. Yeah, F4 looks nice. 
really just solidifying the pawn. And this doesn't really get in the way of anything. So I still have the rook left idea. And there's really no reason to play this move just because the king moves over. The king might be more attackable on, on g8, especially when the rook comes in. Oh, VIPs don't, uh, yeah, don't need to comply with emote only mode. Forgot about that. Ooh. Okay, opponent's going for counterplay. Uh, what to do? Rook g3, I win the bishop. Yeah, this is good enough. So the calculation is rook takes d2, queen h7, king f8, then I take with the rook, a uh, threatening mate in two. If king e7, I still take. I guess there's king d8, never mind. Okay, so here I can take. And knight's still hanging, so important to check here. And now, taking threatening mate. If I play queen f5, I guess I'll go for uh, bringing the knight, the knight to e4. Really got to watch my time. So one, one concern. A bishop g8 could be cool. Now let's go for. Uh, let's go for this. Threatening the rook. I'm just trying to calculate like an easy win. I am a bishop. Fear me. Oh, I don't fear you. I don't think. You should fear me. <laughs> Yeah, these pieces make all the bishops afraid. How am I not meeting? Oh, I'm winning on the knight. The rook has to move to defend, and then I take the knight. Ooh, tricky. Okay, plenty of time. Okay, let's go. Oh, I'm sorry, chat, that maybe you had to... had to wait so long in emote-only mode. I got the job done. That was an interesting game. Um, that was nice I didn't, uh, didn't flag at the end. Thanks, Toggy. The wind bits. Yeah, I'm not sure what to make of this game, actually. Because it felt like I just lost control. Like, it was a nice opening. Maybe a4. a4 was maybe a small positional mistake. Just because, yeah, like b5 isn't really a move black wants to play, because then I play a4. And it's probably nice for me. Um, I'm just curious what the engine will come up with. And there's a lot of moves that uh, are playable. The engine plays very slowly, like queen b3, a3, like rook c1. Okay. So things got messy. I guess when black played queen d7, yeah, I just wasn't aware of the, the fact that my a pawn is, is a target. I was just doing my own thing. And then... And I realized I'm losing a pawn and came up with this idea. 
And I'll admit, when I played Night H2, I didn't even like see I was preparing this. I was just trying to like dance around and play F3. But then this move put me into some kind of panic mode. And Knight H5, yeah, Knight G4 was uh, it was a nice counterattack to throw in the pawn. Of course, if here it's triple, triple pork. This is a pin, yeah, pin plus fork. So, black took here, I took here. I think this was a critical moment that... Oh, Stockfish just says I'm winning? Oh, wow. Yeah, I thought somehow black should be better. But <laughs> maybe this is all good for me. It's weird, because I'm, I'm just threatening these two things. And even after there's no pin, I can still get away with taking because of the, the fork in the end. Um, maybe, okay, F5 engine move and things get crazy. That was a fun game, though. Hope people enjoyed it. I was really not expecting to get a Ponziani after D4. Like playing d4, d6. I guess we, we just transpose though. Which tea on my store is my favorite? Uh, this one. I'm drinking it right now. Egyptian licorice. Oh, it's my move. Uh, let's play. I'll play London. I'll stick with my main repertoire. Yeah, it's warming, warming and naturally spicy sweet. Hey, opponent's here and wants to play chess. That's nice. Um, I'll play, yeah, we'll transpose now into a, a Pierce. Oh, it's, um, it's a Philidor. It's an interesting line. Like white could take, but black is usually happy to get like a queenless middle game. Mm, I could transpose to a Ponziani. I think I did this last time, actually. I encountered this variation. Wait, did I play this opponent the other day? I did. We played the same line. I knew this opening looked familiar. I had a cool game the other day against this opponent, which I actually I checked with Stockfish. Uh, I played H3. Oh, maybe, yeah, we, we played a really cool game where I kind of messed up in the middle game, but then I made it work because the, the blunder turned into a sacrifice, which turned into a mating attack. Um, and this is what he played, yeah. So now I'm going to do the same thing I did last time. There's a trap here. If knight takes pawn... I play d5, knight moves, and then queen a, oops, queen a4 uh, would win the knight. It's a nice kind of Ponziani tactic. But black's not falling for it. So I remember last game, uh, yeah, we, we played exactly the same thing. And at some point, black played a6, and I played a4 which turned out to be a little bit of a inaccuracy because after a6, a4, black was able to take and put the knight on b4 and play a5. So I'm going to try and uh, do a, something a bit different here. If a6, I'll probably play like a3. Black's just going for b6. Whoa, it's Tali Tali. Thanks, Tali Tali. And there's been a lot of raids so far. Maurice Ashley, Tali Tali. Oh, there's someone else earlier too. Shout out to Tali Tali. If you're just joining, I'm playing. I'm playing chess. Opponent's playing a little bit passively. Uh, but also logically. I think the rook usually wants to be here. I mean, black wants to target the the pawn. 
I just want to hold my ground. Thank you, Tamarax, subbing with Prime. Yeah, so I'm going to play a3. Very simply uh, preventing knight b4, and the line takes takes. Because knight b4 would attack the bishop and the pawn. I just don't want to do, want to deal with that. Yeah, thanks again, Talia. Hope you had a good stream. Uh, this is my second game of the stream. Playing some 10-minute some chess. I'm trying to keep it chill and educational. And yeah, the game I played against this opponent a few days ago, we had a similar position. And I remember when I checked Stockfish afterwards, Stockfish was recommending like very slow play, like rook c1, maybe some queen b3 move at some point. It's also a cool idea to put the bishop on b1, then a2, and just align with the king. F-pawn is looking tender. So h3, or h6. h6 is sometimes... It's sometimes a sign of aggression, but it's also a sign black just wants to prevent me from accessing g5. I think I'll play queen c2. I was thinking about this move, but then... It's not easy to move the bishop without losing the pawn. And there's another idea here for white to play knight f1 to g3. And the queen helps... Um, it's called overprotection. Uh, if I played knight f1 too soon, um, after takes, takes, the pawn is hanging. So over overprotecting the pawn will allow me to mobilize a knight. And then I think, I guess, long term, when the knight comes to g3, again, it helps overprotect the pawn and the queen will be able to access d2, which is kind of what I want. Because on d2, the knight's a bit in the way. Also thinking the queen could go to a2. And then the bishop can come here and there's some like cool battery. Maybe combine that with knight here and maybe the opponent will be careless. I'm just trying to identify like all the potential resources I have in the position. Also b4. b4 could be... Uh, it's a bit confrontational, but the idea is to just gain more space and maybe eventually play b5. Hey, it's Gari. What's up, Gari? Shout out to Gari. Grandmaster Gari. Eric Rosen rose to the rise and has risen. Wait. Eric Rosen rose to rise and has risen. Good evening. You need to include something about raisin in that sense. Oh, good evening. To whirl away. And thanks for subbing, JJ Spartan. And Bedamp. Two new sub new, new subscribers. I appreciate that. Oh, Gari. If you just arrived, I don't know if you heard the announcement, but it's Tagi's birthday. Currently. Have to wish him happy birthday. We can celebrate him with Tagi bits as well. Okay, so this move. It actually has some attacking ideas. A uh, very typical kind of King's Indian move. Now there's less attack against the pawn. And there is a response, like sometimes when the knight moves to h5, uh, g3 is a nice prophylactic move. If I play g3, then it would probably make sense to maneuver the bishop. I'm not sure how necessary that is. I mean, I don't think I want to allow this, though. I guess not f4, then I have bishop f1 and g3. 
or even bishop c4. And d5 is another move I can... Actually, like with b4, one of the longer term ideas after takes takes, I can get the pawns rolling with d5, 97, c4. And then maybe black can more easily play f5. And there's bishop b5 here, just threatening d5. But the rook actually probably wants to move back. So what to do? Mm. Just trying to weigh my options, look for you know, some other ideas. There's also knight f1. Going with the original plan of then playing queen d2, which would then, then fight for the f4 square. Actually, it looks kind of interesting. Knight f1, knight f4, bishop c4. I guess on g5. Hmm. It's nice keeping the bishop here because it, it slows down black's ability to play f5. So I think I'll play g3. Just not dealing with this shenanigan. It's a single shenanigan. And then... My thought is I'll, I'll kind of play slowly. But there's a couple ideas. One is to play knight f1. Actually, there's, there's two ideas, but they both start with the same moves. Moves are knight f1 and queen here. Uh, and the two ideas is one to play g4 to chase away the knight, or to play knight h2 to g4 and attack the pawn. Um, so let's play, I'll play knight f1 here. Got to start moving a little bit quicker. Oh, Tagi's birthday is January 7th. Wait, what's today? Oh, it's January 6th. Okay. Yeah, Iceland time works differently than US time, I guess. Okay, so Vox unleashing the bishop. That's actually a good move. I mean, my thought is that I'll, I'll be just in time because I'm attacking the pawn. If f5, I, wait, can I get away with taking? I may have messed up here. Or maybe I didn't mess up. Or maybe I did. I don't know. Okay, that makes me happy. f5 was actually kind of complicated. Because my knight's not defended, there is a pin and fork potential. Um, but now I can play g4. And here I'm just in time where if knight f4 I win a pawn, if knight f6 a uh, knight blocks a pawn. And then I can get my, my happy development. Thank you, Johnny Page. Gifting their first sub to... Here for tea. Appreciate that. Also, thank you, M EMT Cornbread, with 200 bits. Am I planning to play viewers at all? Um, I'm not sure. I mean, if I... Most of my games, I'm just joining the pool. And then I guess my opponents could see that I'm streaming and then become a viewer. But I'm not doing like the typical uh, viewer challenges. Yeah, this is really nice because I'm controlling f5 a bunch of times. And that's one of Black's main pawn breaks.
It still takes work, though. Maybe before here. Wait, is F5 actually a, a threat? Because there's a pin still, which I almost forgot about. F5 might be a, a threat. D5, D5 allows Knight C5. Um, there should be a few ways to handle this. I could move the knight like to weird places. Maybe I will. This is not my first impression. I also have to move a lot quicker. But I'm getting off the diagonal, so at F5 I can just take and and be happy. Yeah, E4 is a good move. So maybe what I'll do is play F4 and win Connect 4. There's still Connect 8 potential. This pawn's kind of annoying, though. Yeah, uh, the problem is now if I play d5, then knight gets a post here. And it's really hard to remove with uh, with b4 because the pawn can always take. But opponents may be not sure what to do. Wow, plays f5 anyway. So if I take... I feel like I should take this way first. This island is open, but and things are opening up. So I guess one line is takes this move. Oh, there's a cool line. Takes e4, takes, takes, and then knight e6. Oh, there's a cool line for black too, but maybe it doesn't work. I don't think it works. I mean, black might go for the exchange sack. Um, yeah, this diagonal is kind of annoying. I can't allow the queen to get here or here. If queen g8 was check, I would be in some, some danger. Okay, so h3 is attacked. I do have d5. Rook g8 is coming. Yeah, I th think I should play d5. Like d5, there's knight f6. It's getting unclear. Maybe f3 first. And then d5 eventually. I mean, I'm up the exchange. So all I have to do is pretty much not get mated and not blunder a queen. Yeah, I want to play d5 soon because this pawn, this pawn is only defended by, I guess it's defended by the rook and the knight, but if takes and my knight's pinned and the main goal is to play uh, rook g1 eventually. I mean, for a few moves there, the bishop was probably like Black's strongest, one of the, the strongest weapons for Black. But now it's kind of just a dead piece. And nice thing about being up the exchange, I can more easily control an open file. I'll play this move first. Maybe just go for the queen trade next. 
Mm. That's a fancy move. Queen g2. I mean, maybe queen c2 is a way to go. So now there's a nice kind of shish kebab of pieces. And if rook e8, I can take attacking the queen twice. And that could lead to a lot of uh, simplification. Okay, yeah, we're trading queens. So I'm up the exchange for a pawn. Rook f3. Yeah, rook f3, idea rook h3. I mean, time is probably the biggest concern. Going after this pawn. I mean, black could maybe win that pawn. Ooh. Ah. Okay, it's still okay. Take here. Or maybe it's not okay? I don't know. No! Okay, opponent missed something there. Ah, missed something else there. <sighs> That's what chess comes down to sometimes. I held on to my rook. I really tried blundering the rook unintentionally. Blundered it here. And then also uh, here. Oh, wait, there's no. I thought I, I allowed this, but the bishop's pinned. Okay. I mean, that started as kind of like a cool instructional positional middle game and just turned into like mud throwing in the end. Wash my hands. That's why. That's why hand sanitizer exists. Man, when I when I press down, the, the sanitizer shoots like sideways and doesn't go completely down. But I'm adjusting. Okay, and I'm sanitizing. Um I mean black was pretty resourceful that game. Because I thought I thought it should be should be pretty smooth sailing from here, but this was a nice concept going after the pawn. And then, like, when my pawns crumble, then it becomes very difficult. Now, the bishop's also hanging, so. Oh, I should have taken the, the bishop here. And then, black doesn't have time to take the pawn, it has to take the bishop, and then I can win this pawn. I guess I was already low on time. Oh, thank you, little one. Huzzah, yeah. Big 30. People need to say huzzah more often. Oh, Refriga. Refriga with 30 months. That's a lot of months. That's 10 times 3. It's 10 times 3 or 5 times 6. <laughs> oh, tier 2 sub 2. Thanks so much. Appreciate that. Um, I'm sure I made some mistakes this game. Maybe I didn't choose the best plan. The engine sometimes has a hard time showing like the best approach. It'll, it'll suggest moves, but it doesn't always suggest like a clear plan. Okay, this idea. I know, yeah, the engine likes d5, but I think practically um, it's easier for black when the center closes because then black can gear up towards playing f5. 
But maybe it would also be easier for me. A4 here? Oh, A4, maybe I can win the pawn. I'll say knight seven. Oh, just play. I could go for like the squeeze approach. Yeah, if I play this opponent again, maybe I'll play a little bit differently. Oh, already. Yeah, f5 here. I was scared of this move. Because black's threatening to fork me, and I can't take because I lose a knight. And if I take here... Maybe it's still unclear. Fe4. Oh, I'm still losing a piece. Or maybe it's just really messy. Man, this engine line. Bishop g7, rook f3. I just leave my bishop here and play bishop e2. Queen d7. A stockfish is ridiculous sometimes. 